Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Will that be all, Mr. David? Uh, thank you. That's fine, Watson. Mrs. Norton, was everything satisfactory? Everything was perfect, Watson. Dinner was delicious, thank you. Not at all. I suppose you're looking forward to Mr. Hartley's coming back from England, Watson. Oh, yes, indeed, sir. The house is very empty without Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Such a big house it's empty even with. If you will forgive me, how much longer will you be in town, Mr. David? Well, we're planning to go back up to Connecticut tomorrow afternoon. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm very sorry to hear that. It's been such a pleasant time with you and Mrs. Norton staying here. We've loved it too, Watson. Breakfast as usual? Mm, yes, as, as usual. I'll tell Cook. Have a pleasant evening, Mr. David. Uh, thank you, Watson. Oh, I'm so full of candlesticks and finger bowls, I'll never be able to eat again. <laughs> Till an hour from now. David, why do you think food tastes so much more tasty off of a gold filigree plate? It's the aristocrat in you. Oh, rubbish. It's the tomato soup and squab and baked Alaska in me. Oh, so you approve of Julia's cuisine. Oh, that's a fancy word for cooking. It was a fancy dinner. Could you eat fancy like that all the time? Oh, it's a grim thought, isn't it? Ah, it's stuffy in the dining room. Let's open some windows, hmm? And let all the nice, clean New York dust in all over Julia's Chippendale. Ah, listen, I've an even better idea. Let's go out into the nice, clean dust. Let's take a walk. I thought we were going to discuss going to the theater. Let's discuss it while we walk. I think I know what this means, but uh, come on. All right. Do you think you'll need a coat? Oh, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Of course I don't need a coat. It's warm as toast out. You're still sure you don't want a coat? The yeah. toast I usually get isn't wa very warm. Very funny. Three days of living at Julian Hartley's and you're spoiled. Like an overripe <laughs> pear. <laughs> exactly. Three days, and you're no longer the same sweet, easy-go-lucky man that I married. In the dear, dead days beyond recall. Oh, it's so nice out. Still a little light. I'll tell you one thing, David. I certainly hope it isn't as nice an evening in Connecticut. It's raining in Connecticut. How do you know? I arranged it. You did? Exactly. Well, so you wouldn't said. feel cheated. Oh, you're so smart. And so I wouldn't feel cheated, too. Must be nice in Connecticut tonight. I just told you it was raining. Well, if it weren't raining, it would be nice. It'd still be light in the sky. All the birds would be singing, and Mr. Tucker's rooster would be crowing. You know that rooster crows all day and all night? Mm hmm. Just exactly like uh, somebody else I know. I am ignoring you. Go ahead. Eastbrook's nice. I miss it. It's nice here, too. Mm, I'll admit it. I've had fun being in New York. It's fun, and it's nice anywhere with you. That's a sweet thing to say. I wish I'd said that. You can. Next time. <laughs> Remind me. <laughs> and in spite of that, New York is one place the more I don't live in, the better I like it. Oh, I wish I'd said that, too. You know, I never thought I could live anywhere but in New York. Right here, right in the middle of all the... Traffic and commotion and bustle. I thought if I lived in the country, I'd feel far away from things and loads. Well, don't you? Anywhere is nice and fun with you and never lonesome. You see, I did say it, <laughs> and I meant it. You better had. Honestly, David, when you're two, it's fun anywhere. In other words, it's not the country that's so nice. It's um, us, us in the country. Conceited but mm. true. But it's nicer in Eastbrook anyway. So much nicer than Julia and Hartley's house. Say, where are we walking on this nice evening? Mm, just down the street a ways. Not too far. Not too near. Oh, there goes a new car. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Just me and my girl walking down the street. David, listen. Wouldn't you hate to be just one? All alone? Even Eastbrook wouldn't be nice if you were just one, would it? No place would be anymore, uh, especially Eastbrook. Maybe especially New York, too. Darling, 
Darling, do you know that if we turn down this block and then we walk, uh, let's see, about a half a block north, we'll be right in front of Mother's. Why, you don't say so. Oh, but I do oh, say for so. for heaven's sakes, what a coincidence we should both be walking to the same place. What's more, I have an idea. I think Mother maybe wouldn't mind having some uh, visitors tonight. David, if you hadn't married me... Would you have married Mama? Like a shot. <laughs> I think you would have. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I love you. Darling, Mama hasn't had much time to be lonesome. I know. That's why when she is lonesome, it must feel twice as bad. Oh, I'm glad she's coming back to Connecticut with us tomorrow. Oh, so am I. We'll take Solomon along, too, won't we? Solomon? That old parrot? Well, he'll be lonesome if we don't. He'll get blue. Blue. He's, a, he's a green parrot. Well, he turns blue when he's lonesome. Oh, uh, yeah. How, how do you know? He told me. Oh. Hey, it's perfect our going up to Mama's because you can help her pack. Pack? Uh-oh. Yes. Uh-oh. A little hard work won't hurt you at all. After all, you're a man. Well, there are times when you seem to take great delight in reminding me. David, packing alone is so alone. I know. Well... Here we are, on Mama's doorstep. Won't you be surprised? I told her we were going to the theater tonight. <laughs> oh, look around, would you? This is a familiar lobby. Familiar to me, too. Mm-hmm. It couldn't be that we have been here together, could it? Come to notice. Let's see, let me see the side view of your mm. face. Yes. Want to see the other side? No, I've seen The back? That. You look familiar to me, too. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Mm-hmm. Darling... This couldn't be where we came right after our honeymoon, could it? Oh, darling, you don't know how I hoped you'd remember. Oh, then I said the right thing. You did. (laughs) (laughs) Say, you know, this this lobby looks littler than I remember somehow. Uh, That's because you're used to the wide-open spaces of Connecticut. The wide-open spaces of our house without any furniture. (laughs) David, you know there's something I, I miss in Connecticut very badly. Oh, Mama's coming out with us tomorrow. Oh, I miss these much more than Mama. Elevators. Here, let me push the button. I don't trip. I never trip. Now, let me see. We press the button for Mama's floor. Mm-hmm. Well, you've made it go up. Congratulations. It wouldn't go sideways. No, but if there'd been any way of making it go sideways, you would have found it. I bet you. You're very smart tonight, aren't you? Oh, I'm pretty smart every night. Oh, really? Ooh, right floor, too. Oh, I hear somebody moving. Mama's home, I can hear her. You don't tell me. I do. I bet you'll be surprised to see us. Well, a modest bet. Hello. I thought it was you. Oh, I lose my bet. Well, that'll teach you to be such a gambler, Claudia. Hello, Mother. What are you doing here? Why aren't you at the theater? Well, aren't you even going to invite us in? Oh, this comes from living in an apartment house without a doorman. Anyone can ring the bell. David, she has just called us anyone. Well, wait till we get her up in Connecticut, Claudia. We'll teach you some manners. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Well, you don't have to get huffy. We just came to see the parrot. Yeah. Solomon's invited us in. Very vulgar, that bird. Very democratic. Hello, Solomon. Say something, old boy. (laughs) (laughs) Why is it that whenever you ask them to talk, they say absolutely nothing? Who? Parrots. Hmm, Maybe he's not happy to see you. Why, Solomon, you're not happy to see us? It's the middle of the night, and you gave us no warning. Solomon and I were in the middle of a very pleasant conversation. Middle of the night? It's nine o'clock. Solomon must be a very dull bird. Say, you're not a very good housekeeper, Mrs. Brown. This room looks a mess. Even Claudia keeps a better house than this. I can see we're going to have to teach her an awful lot of things, David. It might interest you, too, that I'm in the middle of packing. Oh, oh, packing. That's her excuse. Are you uh, going someplace? I was going up to Connecticut tomorrow to visit some poor relatives, but I think I might change my mind. Hello, poor relatives. 
Gladys, what do you know? Claudia, she may change her mind. No, 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 no such luck. Well, since you're here, I guess I might as well sit down. You know, darling, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if your mother is really glad to see us in spite of what she's saying. You really think that's possible? Well, barely, I admit, but possible. Impossible. Go on, David, you ask. Now, Claudia, stop pinching me. <laughs> pinching. Mother, how would you like some help packing? Could be, later. Claudia, your mother's mellowing. Mm. She said we could help. Sweet, isn't she? Oh. Say, darling, listen, I have an idea. This will be good. What do you say we don't go back to Julian Hartley's? But we promised the butler we would. And a promise to a butler is a promise indeed. Are you suggesting, Mrs. Norton, that we spend the night in a hotel? Well, I know someone who has an apartment. A nice four-room apartment. Oh, and three suitcases open in the middle of the living room floor. Just to make the room look casual. And against the wall, a lovely, comfortable sofa that opens up into a bed Oh, for I two. love sleeping on sofas for two. Doesn't it matter to you that all the butlers and the maids and the cooks expect you back? Doesn't matter at all. The house keeps on running, no matter what or who. Mother, you wouldn't keep us from enjoying one night of simple comfort before we head back for the Connecticut wild, would you? Besides which, David and I like staying in places where we have sentimental attachments, don't we, darling? Mm. David, put your coat back on. I did not invite you two to stay here. Darling, she wants us. Isn't it wonderful? A perfectly good four-story house of Julia and Hartley's, and you insist on cluttering up my four-room apartment. I'll bet Mother still has the toothbrush we left the last time we were here. Mama, is that a fact? I haven't looked lately, but they should be here. Dad settles it. We've just received an official invitation to spend the night. Just one thing. No breakfast in bed tomorrow. Well, we'll uh, try to get adjusted. David, you can take your coat off now. Really? You mm -hmm. might as well. Really? I'm outnumbered. Of course you are, <laughs> Mama. And that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. What way, darling? Now, there are three of us together. It is nicer than being two, isn't it, David? Oh, much. And just think of it. In a couple of months from now, we'll be four. Oh, darling, that will be the nicest of all. Notice the expression on the faces of shoppers. Some are the very picture of grim determination. You'd think they were going forth to battle, while others are relaxed and easygoing. Chances are these folks have had the good sense to pause and refresh with ice-cold Coca-Cola during shopping expeditions. Chances are, too, they make wiser selections because they shop refreshed. Excuse me, Mr. King. Oh, hello, Mrs. Brown. So you're going up to the country, I see. The strangest part of all, Mr. King, is that I find myself looking forward to it. You like farm life. In the spring, anyway, with the trees coming out and the... Norton Livestock Flourishing. The Norton Livestock at this moment consists of a cat and a dog. I hope they've weathered David's and Claudia's absence. I hope so too, Mrs. Brown. But I think Jared Tucker, the Norton's neighbor, took pretty good care of them while the Norton's were in New York. He better have, Mr. King, or, well, I don't know what. He better have, Mrs. Brown, or we'll all have to suffer the consequences tomorrow. And as I was saying, every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>